a very good morning this is me nafisa today we are going to learn about the basics of female breast anatomy a woman's body is remarkable not only can she grow another human being but after the birth of the baby she can also provide all the nourishment that the child needs to grow and develop what is the first food given to the baby can you name an ideal first food for the baby a food that gives all the nourishment to the newborn baby answer is the mother's milk or breast milk breast milk is the best first food for the baby breast milk is all that the baby needs for the first 6 months of life breast milk is the gold standard of nutrition for the baby mother's body produces nature's perfect baby food breast milk is unique species specific Breast milk is the ultimate personalized food. The amount of breast milk increases over the first few days after birth along with the baby's weight and appetite. Breast milk provides many health benefits. Breast milk is the ideal nutrition that supports optimal growth and development. The process of feeding milk by the mother to the child or the process of feeding human breast milk to a child is called as nursing or breastfeeding Indian Academy of Pediatrics American Academy of Pediatrics and the World Health Organization all recommend exclusive breastfeeding for the first 6 months of life means giving only breast milk for the first 6 months of baby's life and that too breastfeeding should start during the first star after delivery nothing can replace breast milk Breast milk has great health benefits for the baby and the advantages of breastfeeding to the mom also are very many. Breastfeeding is recommended for the first 2 years of life or longer along with semi solid family foods if the mother and the baby wish to continue. The longer duration a mother breastfeeds the baby, the greater are the short term and the long term health benefits for both the mother and the baby. what is the meaning of exclusive breastfeeding exclusive breastfeeding means feeding baby only breast milk not even water no supplements no outside food no sugar water no juice no soups no infant formula no honey also honey is safe above one year of age but if honey is given to a child in the first year of life then bacteria in honey causes infant botulism and baby may need hospitalization Baby can be given medications or vitamin supplements or mineral supplements that too if it is recommended by the doctor Please note making breast milk involves both the brain as well as the breast several hormones are responsible for making and continuing to make breast milk If the baby has to be given only breast milk then the question or rather the questions that arises are where is milk produced from where is breast milk secreted where is the milk coming out from when is breast milk secreted how is milk transported from the place of production to the place of secretion let's understand the answers to all these questions from where is breast milk secreted breast milk is secreted from the breasts where are the breasts located they are located on the chest breasts are also called as mammary glands Both genders males and females have breasts breasts are paired structures present in both males and females in females it is immature until puberty and during puberty it develops under the influence of hormones in males milk ducts remain undeveloped there is a difference in the breast anatomy of males and females female breasts have more of fat tissues and they have milk glands that will secrete milk whereas the male breasts have less fat tissues and do not have milk glands and have undeveloped milk ducts one of the function of male breasts and female breasts is to provide sexual pleasure main function of the female breasts is to secrete milk and provide all the nourishment that the child needs to grow and develop when will milk be secreted only after it is produced You may be wondering how it all works. It will be easier to understand if we know the anatomy of female breasts. On the outside, skin surrounds the breast. Areola is the darker circular or the oval area on the breast. 
nipple protrudes from the middle of the areola areola is darker in color as compared to the breast because areola is pigmented can i say that areola is the pigmented area or the dark area surrounding the nipple or the darker circle of skin surrounding the nipple during pregnancy and breastfeeding breasts enlarge the nipple and the areola becomes bigger and darker why to make it easier for the baby to see the nipple and latch on to it during breastfeeding on the areola are montgomery glands also known as montgomery tubercles you can remember it as oil glands montgomery glands are present but are not noticeable until a woman becomes pregnant during pregnancy breasts grow in size and the montgomery glands become larger and noticeable and look like pimples on the nipple and areola what do montgomery glands do these glands secrete natural oil so will moisturize the nipple and the areola and prevent them from chapping that is protects the skin of the nipple and the areola during pregnancy and breastfeeding also oil glands will keep the nipple clean and free of bacteria how will it clean this oil contains an enzyme that kills the bacteria also oil gives out a fragrance that is the mother's individual scent which attracts her baby to the mother's breasts and this fragrance helps newborn find the nipple and latch on to breastfeed also inside the areola are pressure receptors pressure on the entire areola stimulates the breast to release breast milk moreover areolas are richly supplied with nerve endings in fact on the inside of the entire breasts are rich network of nerves the nipples and the areolae are richly supplied with nerve endings these nerve endings makes the nipples and the areolae very sensitive to touch male and female breast nipples and areolae have hundreds of nerve endings that helps experience sexual pleasure during sexual act nipple is erect Sucking nipples during intercourse and suckling nipples during breastfeeding stimulates the nerve endings in the nipples and areolae which signal the brain to release two hormones that allows milk let down or milk secretion from the nipple within few seconds to minutes of sucking or suckling in simple words touch stimulates the nerve endings on nipples and areolae which lets the female body know when to release the milk also On the inside of each breast are blood vessels and lymph vessels. Breasts are rich in blood supply. Blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the breast tissues and removes waste from the breast tissues. We said blood carries nutrients to the breast tissue. These nutrients are needed for breast milk production. Lymph vessels carry lymph which has white blood cells that help fight infections that is provides immunity to the breasts. breasts have no muscles but muscles lie under each breast on the inside of the mature breasts are three types of tissues connective tissue adipose tissue and glandular tissue on the inside of the mature breasts are three types of tissues connective tissue adipose tissue and glandular tissue connective tissue as the name suggests connect the skin of the breast to the chest wall and holds the glandular tissue and adipose tissue in place and hence provides support to the breast adipose tissue or the fat tissue cushions and protects the breasts amount of fat in the breast determines the size of the breast amount of fat in the breast has nothing to do with the milk producing ability menopausal women have more fat tissue as compared to other breast tissues glandular tissue is the most important tissue of the breast tissue means made up of a group of cells group of cells is alveoli glands means group of cells that take up the substances from the blood and produce other substances and then secrete them hence alveoli are also referred to as alveolar glands what will alveolar glands secrete milk hence glandular tissue a milk producing glands or milk producing tissues who will signal alveolar glands to produce milk hormones let's learn glandular tissue in detail glandular tissue or the milk producing tissue 
Tissue means group of cells. So the basic cell which is producing milk is called as alveolus. Alveolus is made up of a single layer of secretory epithelial cells. Alveolus is a single cell, plays an important role in milk production. Group of alveolus is called as alveoli. Alveoli are milk producing glands. That means milk is produced in alveoli. So the function of alveoli is will produce milk and store milk. Please note, in alveoli, milk is produced in response to hormonal signal. Each alveoli is attached to a tube-like structure called as ductule. We said that alveoli function is to produce milk and store milk. Milk is also stored in the ductules. One alveoli is attached to one ductule. Another alveoli is attached to another ductule. Another alveoli is attached to another ductule. Ductules are smaller, thinner tubes. A group of alveoli forms one lobule. Lobules have a network of ductules. All ductules open in duct. Duct is a bigger tube. A group of alveoli forms one lobule. One lobule is opening in one duct. A group of alveoli forms one lobule. Second lobule is opening in second duct. A group of lobules, that is 20 to 40 lobules, will form one lobe. All these ducts will merge together to form the larger duct or the main duct. Each lobe is attached to one main duct. There are 15 to 20 lobes which are present in each breast. So if 15 to 20 lobes are present in each breast, there are 15 to 20 main ducts. These 15 to 20 main ducts will open at the tip of the nipple. So there are 15 to 20 openings in each nipple for the milk to flow. And hence the milk will flow in fine streams to the baby. The breast is made up of 15 to 20 sections called as lobes. That is each breast has got 15 to 20 lobes. These are arranged in a circular fashion like the petals of a flower. Each lobe is attached to one main duct. There are 15 to 20 lobes which are present in each breast. So if 15 to 20 lobes are present in each breast, there are 15 to 20 main ducts. These 15 to 20 main ducts will open at the tip of the nipple. So there are 15 to 20 openings in each nipple for the milk to flow. And hence the milk will flow in fine streams to the baby. One may ask, where is milk coming out from? There is no hole in the nipple. The answer is, there is no single hole but there are 15 to 20 openings and these openings are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye. Alveoli are surrounded by a single layer of epithelial cells. Surrounding the epithelial cells are muscles. Muscles are surrounding the epithelial cells of alveoli. Therefore, they are named as myoepithelial cells or MEC. Myo means muscles. Muscles means will contract. When the muscles contract, they will squeeze the alveoli. So the milk present in the alveoli and ductule will flow in the duct. Function of the myoepithelial cells is milk secretion. When the myoepithelial cells contracts, this squeezes the alveoli. Milk stored in the alveoli passes from the ductules to the duct to the nipple to the baby's mouth. There are 15 to 20 openings in the nipple, so milk flows in fine streams to the baby. This is how milk is transported from the alveoli to the nipple into the baby's mouth. Thank you so much. Stay blessed always.